got contacts on me. Front to back. I said, you know, drive in reverse, hard right. And our co-driver was driving, and he wasn't a very good driver. And he went to go into reverse. He revved up the engine. The real driver grabbed the hand throttles, and then he just grabbed the gear shift lever and rammed it into reverse, and he yelled into the face of the co-driver, let out that clutch and get the hell out of here. And so we went shooting back. The Sherbrooke Fusiliers lose half their tanks and are forced to retreat. Other units suffer similar losses and pull back. Operation Goodwood is a disaster. The British sent 800 tanks across that open ground just south of Khan, and 400 of them were knocked out. The Germans were up on the Bourgibus Ferrier Ridge and were able to see for miles and miles. And along those miles, the Germans were entrenched in farmhouses, hidden away with their big guns. Able to see everything that moved, able to cover the whole area with their 88 millimeter, their famous anti-tank guns which were anti-aircraft guns, supposed to fire at aircraft 20,000 feet up in the air, but firing at us 200 yards away. On the 21st, the offensive against Verrier Ridge is called off right the as the enormity of the back. losses um, sinks in. In just four days, the Allies lose over 6,000 men and more than 300 tanks and the Germans still remain Perfect. firmly in control awesome. of the ridge. All right, I'll be now, back. Our task was to go up that hill and find a way in which we could get through those German lines, which are now reported to be possibly one of the strongest defenses. You know, you could just hit escape and then hit redeploy. Yeah, you're right. The I Allies could, are desperate for a breakthrough. Canadian Lieutenant General Guy yeah. Simmons comes right. up with a bold and risky plan to take the ridge. Codenamed Operation Totalize, Simmons' plan calls for 400 tanks to quickly advance in six columns straight into the German defensive positions. And to reduce the effect of the German big guns, he will launch the attack at night. There's one in the building. If one asks what did one see, the simple answer is nothing. July 21st, 1944. After taking enormous casualties in four days of bloody fighting, the Allies cancel their massive armored offensive aimed at eliminating the stubborn German defenses along Verrier Ridge. Lieutenant General Guy Simmons comes up with a new plan. The Allies must take the ridge because a breakthrough is key to the overall campaign in Normandy. I'm coming back. Daddy. Codenamed Operation Totalize, it calls for 400 tanks supported by infantry to rush forward in six columns headlong into the German guns. I'm, I'm dropping supplies, War Dog. To reduce the effect right, of the sweet. guns, Simmons plans to strike under the cover of darkness. A nocturnal armored operation on this scale has never been tried before. So Simmons orders his infantry and tanks to practice the attack in daylight over and over again. Getting ready for total Oh, we got guys over here on our outpost. Basically, uh, about a week of really studying how to put it together. They put one, two, three, four. They made up four columns. Behind those four tanks, they put four more. Behind that, they put four flails. Behind that, another four flails. And then four companies of infantry in well, armored personnel done. carriers. Uh, everything tracked, not one wheel vehicle at all. 11.30 hours, August 8th. After a massive bombardment, Operation...
Operation Total Eyes begins. 400 British and Canadian tanks lurch forward into the darkness. So you were uh, in a, a mixture of uh, sentiments. You were afraid, you were proud, you were thrilled, uh, you were bewildered. The tanks stay close together, crawling slowly toward the ridge, following lines of tracer fire that point the way to each unit's objective. And all you saw was the red tail light of a tank in front. So you fixed your eyes on that red tail light and you followed for your life's sake. And the buggers would be putting in mines knowing reasonably well where we were and which way we may come out against them. Total chaos with flashes going on all over the place, uh, shells exploding. You'd hear the shooting going on all over the damn place. On the way, you saw some Germans in slit trenches, but you've been told not to stop, to keep going. You saw one of your tanks in front of you hit and going up in flames. You saw another one hit, going up in flames. You didn't know what was happening. You kept going, you kept going. By dawn on August 8th, Canadian and British forces have captured most of Verrier Ridge. By noon, the entire position is in Allied hands. Phase one of Operation Outpost is a success, opening the way for the Allies to advance and hook up with U.S. forces further south. On August 21st, after two more weeks of fierce fighting, the Allies finally complete their encirclement of the German army in Normandy. Those Germans who remain trapped inside the pocket are now easy prey for the Allies' superior air power. Uh, for a while, this tremendous slaughter we can only call went on. More and more bombers and fighter bombers attacked. The misery around us screamed to high heaven. Refugees and soldiers from the defeated German armies looked helplessly at the bombers flying continuously overhead. It was useless to take cover from the bursting shells and bombs. Concentrated in such a confined space, we offered once-in-a-lifetime targets to the enemy air power. Death shadowed us at every step. We stood out like targets on a range. It was impossible to miss us. The destruction of the German army in France marks the end of the Battle of Normandy. German losses are horrific. 200,000 are killed or wounded, and 1,300 tanks are destroyed. Normandy has become a graveyard for the once mighty German panzers. Of the 12th SS Panzer Division, only 10 tanks and 300 men are reported to have escaped including Kurt Meyer, who was later put on trial for war crimes, including the killing of 18 Canadian prisoners at the Abbe d'Ardenne. But he spends just nine years in prison. For the Allies, the Battle of Normandy is a great victory, but it comes at a steep price. 50,000 men are killed, and over 150,000 are wounded. In the Battle of Normandy, the Sherbrooke Fusiliers suffer some of their heaviest losses of the war. Many still wonder how they survived. You know, I've been in tanks who were knocked out, but the shell didn't hit where I was. I've been in mortar 
uh, barrages, but no mortar came down where I was. It's just dumb luck. Um, I think everybody would agree on that. You, you gotta be skillful, you gotta be thoughtful and careful and all of that. But if you're not lucky, you're not gonna make it. Two army units, one British, no, one German, off. arrive in Italy. Two. Squad commander, sir. Are we changing location? Yo, War Dog, can you put down an OP? I'll, I'll throw down some supplies when I get to you. Yes, please. All right, just a second. All right. All right, I'll post up. Okay, I'm gonna drop some supplies. And are they still on that marker on G? Roughly. Okay. Cool. Are we changing location? Excuse me, Warthog. What's up? Are we changing location? I'm in St. Mir. St. Mira. Uh, yeah, we have to move on to uh, Gambusville. Yeah, you can just redeploy. Yes, sir. I think you got them all over here. I don't see anybody. Alright, let's move on to Gambusville. Contact, contact. James, he's to your left. It's the Rocky. It's the Rocky Boys. How's it going, lads? This authentic Germain. We're going to defend our homeland, boys. Us authentic Germains. 
Watch out, guys. There's an LMG on my body. Did you know that if you, your head lowers, so you can actually protect yourself if you're, like, hiding behind a wall? So if you ever get headshot, why is because your head's poking out? Most people don't understand that. Good job. That's a good idea. Tell them where we are.